Hello, we are reaching you live from Ibran TV News Studios. You're in Lagos, Nigeria. Coming up, Senate threatens to arrest heads of 56 agencies if it fails to appear before it next week. National Association of Nigerian Students declares June 12th National Day of Protests. Nigeria's external reserves lose $640 million in May. A U.S. President Joe Biden says legacy of racist violence and white supremacy still resonates in the U.S. Thanks very much for joining us on News Now. And here are the big stories we're tracking at this hour. I'm Michael Nath. The Senate Public Accounts Committee on Tuesday threatened to invoke the necessary provisions of the Constitution to compel about 56 agencies of federal government to appear before it from next Tuesday. The chairman of the Senate panel, Senator Matthew Oroide, said this while addressing journalists after some agencies summoned to appear before it shunned the invitations. The panel is currently scrutinizing the queries raised against federal agencies as contained in the 2018 report of the Auditor General for the Federation. Only two out of the seven agencies slated to appear before it on Tuesday showed up. Enraged by the development, Regire uh, directed the Secretariat of the Committee to write final warning letters to all the airing agencies. Senator vows to invoke Section 89 of the Constitution, which empowers them to issue bench warrant of arrest if they fail to honor last warning letters. Members of the Allied Union of Health Professionals at the University College Hospital Ibado have embarked on an indefinite strike to drive home their unrelenting demand for improved welfare. The workers made these demands known uh, during a peaceful protest held across the nation's foremost premier teaching medical facility. The chairman of the union, Oladakbo Ola Pambe, uh, lamented the uh, spate of uh, non-payment of salaries of regular staff, uh, re regular uh, payment of health professional items uh, in terms, as well as the immediate stoppage of all forms of discriminatory actions by the management of the hospital. All financial responsibilities are not with as the affected staff members have to feed their various families, pay school fees, pay rent, among other responsibilities. In the, in the face of the prevailing economic situation in the country. Two, salaries, allowances, and other movements accruing to political office holders are being paid basically and clearly. By this strike, it means you cannot perform any medical test, blood test, blood uh, donation, blood transfusion, any test whatsoever cannot be performed. The National Association of Nigerian Students says June 12 should be a national day of protest for all Nigerian students rather than the celebration of Democracy Day. The national president of NAN, uh, Sunday Asefo, uh, I said that the country should not be celebrating Democracy Day on June the 12th while students are being killed and kidnapped by bandits. Osefo told journalists in Adoikete yesterday that it is sad that insecurity has reached a frightening peak where students could no longer go to school with the guarantee that they would return home safely. He noted that about 200 students of Islamia school were kidnapped in Rafi local government area of Niger State in a shocking and bizarre fashion barely 24 hours after students of Greenfield University Kaduna were released by their abductors. The NANS leader observed that the seemingly incessant and incurable kidnapping students of key students in northwest and north central regions of the country called for urgent radical move that would hold Nigeria's gradual slide into anarchy. He also declared June the 11th and 12th as national days for the repose of students who died in the hands of kidnappers and for the safe return of those still being held hostage by these evildoers. As the phone said, quote, putting it in the right perspective, the government and security apparatuses 
have failed us. We can no longer trust them. End of quote. The National Association of Nigerian Students, NANS, have also asked the federal government to shut down all schools in the northwest and north central parts of Nigeria. The national president of the union, Osefo Asande, said the position of the Apex Students Party was informed by the recent upsurge in activities of bandits and kidnappers targeting her institutions in some parts of northern Nigeria. Of insecurity in the country is getting out of hand. And NANS cannot fold, no longer fold his hand and be looking for things is getting deteriorating every day. The unity of this country is blinking. As a Nigerian, as a student leader, we so much believe in the unity of this country. But we call the government at all levels to please, particularly in the Northwest, if closing of our schools is the only solution for now, temporarily, and for them to build up a security around all our campuses is the best, we advise them. Even though we regret by announcing this, we advise them that the government should close down all our schools in the north, in the northwest and part of the north central. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Wajabiamila, has listed the issues with the 1999 constitution currently run by Nigeria, saying the law was hurriedly put together and falls short of the required standard. Wajabiamila said this in Lagos on Tuesday at a public hearing organized by the House Special Committee on the Review of the Constitution. The Speaker said the hearing was part of a deliberate effort by the National Assembly to seek the guidance and support of citizens towards amending the Constitution. Wajabiamila said, a quote, We will have failed in our mandate if the Constitution that emerges from this process continues to look to our past rather than reflect our present and speak to our future. We have an opportunity for renewal and we must seize it or face the harsh judgment of history. End of quote. The national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Uche Sekundos, on Tuesday urged the European Union to review its partnership with Nigeria. This is said would go a long way in strengthening democracy in Nigeria. The opposition party leader made the appeal while receiving an EU team of Evaluators led by Professor Adele Junior and Professor Victor Adetula in his office at Wadata House, Abuja. Sikondo said, quote, if the European Union has put in about 100 million euros supporting the democratic institutions in Nigeria, like the Independent National Electoral Commission, it should ensure that they play by the rules. End of quote. The PDP chairman urged EU officials to sit down with the INEC and put necessary pressure for the passage and signing of the amended Electoral Act. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, uh, Timmy Pret Silva, on Tuesday commissioned the Unicorn Incubation and Innovation Campus. The event was held at the Unicorn Center, Herbert Markley Way, amid heavy downpour. Speaking of the commissioning, the minister said, quote, This building in the center of three great institutions, Unilag, Yabatec, and the FCE, originally built for learning, have now been converted to being used for learning and innovation. The main resource that Africa has is the human resource which has not been developed. And then we took, off, took over from the colonialists and more or less followed in their footsteps. Oil became the only resource, more or less, that we focused on. But of course, you must learn from the Jewish example that the development of the human resource means the development of the most sustainable resource. And we have human capital in abundance in Nigeria. I am deeply pleased that the Unicorn Group is keen into the most important and promising sector with the launching of the biggest incubation campus in Africa, located here in Yaba, the heart of Lagos Technology Hall. I want to specially acknowledge and also commend the chairman, Dr. Akitoye Akindele, 
board members and management of Unicorn Group for the giant strides the group has recorded in East Africa and in several other parts of Africa. The federal government has commissioned 20 basic life support ambulance buses and seven firefighting trucks that will be deployed among seven state commands. The Minister of Interior, Rauf Arimushola, during the commissioning ceremony in Abuja, said the procured equipment are part of the 10.4 billion Naira infrastructure upgrade fund approved by the Federal Executive Council in March to fight the emergency. 186 fire calls, 36 rescue emergencies were reported, 175 lives saved, 11 lives lost, an estimated properties of 3.7 trillion were saved, an estimated property loss of 9.42 billion. The major reason behind spike in the first quarter of 2021 figure is industrial fire. Nonetheless, the phenomenal increase in firefighting and emergency asset base under the watch of Mr. President is unprecedented in the history of the Federal Fire Service. Let me enjoin the Federal Fire Service to ensure the judicious use of the state-of-the-art equipment which should be fairly distributed, regularly maintained, but not to be taken as donation to states where they are to be deployed. Our service and the federal fire services is to complement the states, not to be the main and only firefighting organizations in the states. As a matter of us, if we go in the spirit and letters of the federal constitution, local governments too, must have capacity to fight fire, not at all. And we don't need to buy brothers in firefighting for no. There are small, small firefighting force which are more amenable to fighting fire incidents and the very Families of late Mrs. Lucy Mori and Tony Bassi have protested against the unlawful position of firearms and murder of their family members. Speaking on Friday in Benin City, the leader of the protesters, Emmanuel Abogun, narrated how it all happened. When she died, you will see all the police assembled there. Now, government has started to go and do vigilante work. They are not killing the people. Government is silent. Yeah. As if our life no longer matters. That way, the great state government should come to the rescue of this, of this family. As I speak to you, look at this woman, her first child on earth, just three months with her husband. The vigilante has taken the, 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 the breadwinner of, of the family away. And tomorrow they will say that they are fighting for us. Tomorrow they will say that they mean well for us. So government should please come to the rescue of these people. Peter sent for a gun. When he got it, he sent for bullets. Then he left where he was seated and took a very comfortable spot where he shot both of them. And one bullet killed both of them. What we are asking the government for is for justice. That these people and those at large should be brought to justice. That's what we are asking the government for. Given the insecurity challenges in Nigeria, the national leadership of Christian Association of Nigeria has declared a weak prayer for the nation. But State's Can Chairman, Reverend Joseph Ahaya, says the prayer becomes necessary considering the unpleasant happenings in the state and other parts of the country. Of insecurity, the instability in our land, the lack of positive progress that we can visibly see, even as we march towards another day that government was sworn in for Christians all over Nigeria to fast and pray, to seek the face of the Lord concerning this country and to also challenge ourselves on the need to act responsibly as citizens. Nigeria have gone a long way, but despite these years of independence, these years of different kind of governments, we seem not to have a tangible progress that we can really be proud of. What we have is what the government of the era want to make as a way of slogan for us to sing praises of their doing. But the reality is that Nigerians are still suffering due to poverty, due to hunger, due to kidnapping, banditry, killings, ethno-religious crises and others. And so we feel as a church, the best contribution we can give is to pray. Yeah, we have other contributions, but we put prayer as number one. And then to act, we we'll challenge ourselves to act responsibly, do what citizens are expected to do. 
Governor Boyegao Yetala of Washington State has reassured residents, especially road users and traders, that the ongoing Olaya flyover project in the state capital will be completed before or within nine months, as promised. Oyetola gave the assurance while inspecting the project construction site of the ongoing Olaya flyover bridge in Oshobo, the state capital. With the level four work done, I'm not an engineer, but looking at the work done so far, I'm convinced that we're likely to even achieve it beyond before the period that has been amount for the completion. You can see things for yourself. I mean, most of these things are already, it's like, you're building a house, you have your foundation, you're putting on the blocks. Before you know it, the house is there. And uh, I want to assure everybody that we're not compromising on standards. We have different layers of consultants, both the Ministry of Works, the designs, and external consultants. So I'm satisfied. So this uh, show foresight to say that uh, we have uh, a way to ensure that the central urban business districts of the state and the state also becoming the regional hub for the southwest economy will benefit from this very important project. The project is at 45% completion. The substructural work is 100% done. The precast elements, as you can see, we have 32 of them and all the 32 are on ground. The support lab, we have 102 and all of them have done casting. African news now. Algeria has partially reopened its skies to commercial flights after 14 months of a shutdown to keep out the coronavirus. The first flight of the national carrier, Air Algeria, uh, took off for Paris on Tuesday and then landed later in the Algerian capital Algiers. The reopening has been extremely cautious, with limited flights and strict requirements for passengers. With the present arrangement, those heading to Algiers must have a negative COVID-19 PCR test less than 36 hours before boarding, and all passengers must undergo a five-day quarantine in a hotel requisitioned by the state. Expenses and meals at the hotel must be paid by the passengers, and not everyone can board the infrequent flights. A negative test result is required to also leave the hotel. Chad and the Central African Republic, CAR, have called on the United Nations and African Union to investigate an incident at the border post in which at least six Chadian soldiers were killed by Central African troops. The incident threatens to escalate tensions between the two countries since Chad participated in African efforts to stabilize CAR in 2013, which has been racked by rebel insurgency ever since. The country's foreign ministers said in the statement said uh, the two parties have recognized the gravity of the situation and stressed the urgency of clarifying the circumstances in which this attack was carried out. Chad's defense ministry on Sunday said that Central African troops had attacked a Chadian military post, killed one soldier and kidnapped and executed five others. Action is said amounted to a crime, war crime. The World Health Organization, WHO, said on Tuesday it has approved a COVID-19 vaccine made by Sinovac Biotech SVA.O for emergency use listing, paving the way for a second Chinese shot to be used in poor countries. A WHO emergency listing is a signal to national regulators of a product's safety and the efficacy and will allow the Sinovac shot to be included in COVAX, the global program providing vaccines uh, mainly for poor countries, which faces major supply problems due to curves on Indian exports. The WHO's independent panel of experts said in a statement that it recommended Sinovac vaccine for adults over 18 years. There was no upper, upper age limit, as data suggested it is likely to have a protective effect in older people. WHO Director General Tedros Adhanan, uh, where Reus, uh, welcomed the move, calling the vaccine safe and effective, and not noting it is easily storage or it is easy to store requirements and make it suitable for low-income countries. Joe Biden on Tuesday became the first sitting U.S. president to visit the site in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where hundreds of black Americans were massacred by a white uh, mob in 1929, and he said the legacy of racist violence and white supremacy still resonates.
Biden came to Tulsa for, to put up spotlights on an event that epitomizes the country's history of brutal and racial violence, despite the massacre being largely under the radar in U.S. classrooms and history books for years. Biden said the deadly January the 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol and efforts by a number of states to restrict voting were echoes of the same problem. White residents in Tulsa shot and killed up to 300 black people on May the 31st and June 1st, 20, 1921, and burned and looted homes and businesses, devastating a prosperous African-American community after a white woman accused a black man of assault, an allegation that was never proven. Insurance companies did not cover the damages, while no one was charged for the violence. Up next is Sports with Jidechi. Welcome to the Sports Update. I am Jidechi Chid Asia. Now, tennis superstar Serena Williams looked to continue her bid for an elusive 24th Grand Slam singles crown on Wednesday at the French Open now without two of the world's top three ranked women players. That nine-year-old Williams has already seen two of her likeliest title challengers who have both beaten her in major finals in recent years either fall to the start of the tournament or pull out in unprecedented circumstances. World number three, Simona Halep, the 2018 Roland Garros champion who defeated Williams a year later in Wimbledon final withdrew before the tournament with injury, while world number two Naomi Osaka surprisingly withdrew after a controversy that followed her press boycott. Williams will now be expected to play in front of a crowd for the first time this week as the night sections are currently behind closed doors due to the French government's imposed 9 p.m. curfew. And in local scene, MFM football club interim head coach Olale Kor Gabriel has attributed the club's recent rise in the Nigeria Professional Football League to the coaches and the players' determination to finish strongly this season. The Olukoya boys, who were 13th on the MPFL table as of March Day 21, are now 9th on the log following three wins and a draw. Coach Gabriel said the club's new position on the table did not just come easy, that they had to try and do something different, which is now working for the team. He also added that they looked at the lapses of the team and made amendments to stabilize their game. Currently ninth on the table, the Olukoya boys will next feature against Rangers International of Enugu at the Nandi Azikiwe Stadium on Sunday in a match day 25 fixture of the 2021 Nigeria Professional Football League. And that's all for now on the Sports Update. Michael, it's back to you. Thank you very much, Jidechi. Next on News Now is Business News. The international oil price Brent crude rose above uh, the $70 per barrel mark on Tuesday, with the organization of the petroleum exporting countries projecting that demand for the commodity is bound to improve. Brent, against which Nigeria's oil is priced, increased by $1.38 to $70.70 per barrel as of 4.32 uh, p.m. Uh, Nigerian time on Tuesday, while the United States West Texas Intermediate traded at $67.68, uh, gaining $1.36. Uh, Bloomberg had earlier reported on Tuesday that futures in London rose as much as 1.5%. 4% after posting a second straight monthly gain. Reacting to developments in the oil sector as at its uh, 17th OPEC and non-OPEC ministerial meeting that was conducted and concluded on Tuesday, the organization pointed out that demand for crude oil would improve. The Secretary General of OPEC, Mohamed Bakindo, uh, said at the meeting that as increased economy 
uh, economic growth from China, the United States, India, and the Eurozone, uh, demand uh, was expected to grow by 6 million barrels per day to around 96 million per barrels per day on an average for the year, an increase of 6.6%. Uh, now, the country's external reserves lost $640 million in May, falling to $34.24 billion on May the 28th from $34.88 billion as of April the 28th. Uh, figures obtained from the Central Bank of Nigeria on Tuesday revealed that their reserves had been fluctuating in recent weeks. Speaking on the decline of the recent Monetary Policy Committee meeting, the CBN Governor Godwin Emefiele said this reflects sales to the foreign exchange market and third-party payments. In March, the reserves lost $178 million after dropping from $34.99 billion as of March the 1st to $34.82 billion as of the end of March the 31st. In February, the reserves dropped by $1.1 billion, falling from $36.19 billion as of February 1 to $35.09 billion on February the 28th or 26th. Now, OPEC oil producers agreed on Tuesday to stick to the existing pace of gradually increasing supply curves through July as they sought to balance the expectations of a recovery in demand against the possible increase in Iranian supply. The Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries and Allies, known collectively as OPEC, decided in April to return 2.1 million barrels per day uh, of supply to the market during May through July, as it anticipated demand would rise, despite the numbers of coronavirus cases in India. Since that decision, oil prices have extended their rally and have now gained more than 30% this year, although the prospect of more crude from Iran as talks on reviving its nuclear deal make progress has limited the upside. Now, benchmark Brent uh, crude hit $71 a barrel, its highest since March on Tuesday. A total of 75 firms have submitted bets to serve as uh, concessionaries, uh, concessionaries for 12 federal roads that are mapped out for concession by the federal government. Bid documents submitted by the companies as well as the names of the firms were officially announced on Tuesday at the headquarters of the Federal Ministry of Works and Housing in Abuja. Some of the firms that submitted bids include China Road and Bridge Corporation of Nigeria Limited, Dafak Capitals Limited, Dantata and Sowe, a construction company in Nigeria Limited, Diamond Straples Limited and E.K. Holdings Limited. The ministry said the bids were for value-added concession for 12 federal roads under the Highway Development and Management Initiative. The Minister of Works and Housing, Baba Tunde Pashula, had in December 2020 received his Certificate of Compliance for the outline business case for the HDMI, followed by the official inauguration of the e-portal by the minister on March 29, 2021. Now, Binance announced on Thursday its first Binance Smart Chain Hackathon for Africa tagged as Decentralized Africa with a prize pool of over $30,000 on Tuesday. He said a 20-day hackathon would empower block, uh, blockchain engineers to rapidly build blockchain solutions on the Binance Smart Chain in order to solve real problems identified in the African systems. According to a statement, the Hackathon, which is slated for June, is dedicated to the development of DeFi NFT projects covering savings, lending and borrowing, swaps, royalties and renting, elections, identity management, land ownership and NFTs, marketplaces, among other relevant areas. Meanwhile, Coinbase announced on Tuesday that its users can now use the their Coinbase card with Apple Pay and Google Pay. The company said starting from this week, it will select customers off its waitlist to begin earning up to 4% in crypto rewards. And with that, we end the news. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I am Michael Nas.